told every Vernon, Vernon just, uh, it was something that I told everybody at the very beginning of the week. I will not tolerate um, players that think it's about them when it's about the team. And um, we cannot make, we cannot make decisions that cost the team. And then come off the sideline and it's nonchalant. No. You know what? I, I, this is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with 10 people and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. Generation. There aren't a whole lot of black men out there that we um, assume are eligible. So I think white women who date black uh, men are taking our men from us. And uh, in order for us to deal in our community to affect the change, starting from the nuclear family, we've got to have a brother and a sister working on that. Oh, Why do you think that uh, there aren't enough black men to go around? Well, now, we, we all know the, uh, the realities. Yeah. You know, we, we know about prison. We know about drugs. We know about gang warfare. We also know about homosexuality. Those are realities that we cannot, we can't dismiss. So of the black, the black men that are still walking the streets that the sisters have a, a chance to deal with, you know, if, if a, a white woman is um, batting her eye instead of dealing with someone in her own race, then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. What are we supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Caucasian people have put most of our people in jail and incarcerated them anyway. So no Don't you think that's home. a little bit of a generalization? No. In terms of what? No. All white people are responsible for black men being in jail? At well, least 95%? I'm right? not saying that white people... No. Where, no. Is, where is that statistic no. coming from? Please, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, that, that white people are responsible for incarcerating black Cheryl men. Cheryl said that. Cheryl said that 95%. That I don't have anything to do with what Cheryl said. I did not say that. I'm However, what I am saying is that there are brothers in jail. And the reality of that is there are a lot of sisters running around here out, outside who don't have anybody to deal with who spend their nights sitting home crying doing that girl talk thing because there is no man in their lives we need to do something about that so that we can affect the change in our community and the only way we can do that is if a brother and a sister make the commitment right. to deal like our grandparents they put them away from the beginning of time okay what do you like to say to that yeah i respect both of your opinions because it's an opinion but i personally feel that that was the past this is the present there's no need for history to repeat itself we gotta we gotta we have to we have to excuse me we have to we Wait have to let go of the past in order to make the future brighter and better if we keep on holding up to what happened then we're not gonna move forward we're just gonna keep going back we need to break the chain be realistic and stop being ignorant period you have been weighed you have been measured and you have been found wanting. Finishing touches, I have been the individual that made the difference. I have been the finishing touches, I have been the individual that made the difference. Hi, ladies, man. Ooh, it's a lady. <laughs> I'm lonely and miserable. Oh, well, that is not good. Um, but I think that I can help. You qualify to participate in my annual Thanksgiving Day dinner for all ladies who are lonely and under 250 pounds. <laughs> I like to call it Leon Phelps Thanksgiving Day dinner. I hope that you will come because there will be a delicious um, turkey-like loaf, um, the suitcases full of fine beer, and many skanks such as yourself in attendance, okay? <laughs> uh, next caller. And long and our conclusion is America is the worst place in the world to date if you're a man. Think about this. If you make $34,000 a year, you're the top 1% of the world. How are you treated in America? And before guys are like, oh, it's so unfair. These women, blah, 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 blah. They're, they're screwing everything up. Guys, they have it worse. They have it worse than you. If you're, they like to date up and across, right? If you're born in the richest country in the world, who are you dating up to? They have no options. You need to thank the Lord every day you were born in America and you're a man because you leave the country, you're in the top 1%. You just got to leave to find out, bro. I just spoke with the homies all night. She 
calling me Fablo, she think that I'm Pablo. Let's go. She watch too much narcos, she think I'm the narcos. Let's go. I buy to the bar clothes, I hit Neiman Marcos. Know that. Fuck her was Fargo, it stacks in my cargoes. You know that. Rizzo the Blanco, she got the Donko. Okay. Whipping that foreign, like it's the Bronco. Okay. I'm on the highway, like I caught the body. Me and Capadre, smoking beats by Dre Loud to the head, take it loud to the head First we count up the blessings, then we count up the bread I can count on the squad, I can count them like one, two, three Everything gotta run through me, you know half of the one, two, see Yeah don't you get comfortable, nigga, cause that's when they come for you, nigga Not here to comfort you, nigga, lay you like comfort a nigga You know where I come from, my nigga, I am from the iron jungle my nigga. I done seen a lion's rumble, my nigga Listen up, you Brian Gumbel, that's niggas Young OG is back to humble, you niggas Club. I got what you want, I know what you want I got what you need, I know what you need I got what you like, I know what you like I got what you love, I am your plug uh, uh, uh. She fell in love, she fell in love uh, uh, uh. She want the plug she want the plug, uh, uh, uh. She fell in love. She want the plug, uh, uh, uh. She fell in love. She want the plug, uh, uh, uh. She giving me bad souls. She feeling my dress code. I blame on Nesto. It's your fault, on Nesto. Took me to the West Coast. Link me with Nate Dogg. I gotta cook up now. Ain't no marinade, dog. It's no time to wait, dog. Wait, dog. Wait, dog. We done selling weight dog, weight dog, weight dog. If I feel a weight dog, they feel a weight dog. They come with a case dog, like it's cool weight dog. Oh, we know it's bite, we aggressive shots. Don't you ask us nothing, fuck a question mark. Flies, nigga, in it, spit the freshest boss. This is narco swag, call me fresh good bar. I got what you want. I know what you want. I, know what you want. I got what you need. I know what you need. I, know what you need. I got what you like. I know what you like. I got what you love. I am your plug. Uh, uh, uh. She fell in love. She fell in love. Uh, uh, uh. She want the plug. She want the plug. Uh, uh, uh. She fell in love. She want the plug. Uh, uh, uh. She fell in love. She want the plug. Uh, uh, uh. She need a plug. Fucking me good. She need a plug. Holding me down. She be the plug. Whatever I need. She be the plug. Hablo en la calle, no hay amigos. Porque no me contesta. Usted lo sabe que yo lo amo. Regrese. Pablo, yo lo amo. Y no te podemos perder. Por favor, tengan mucho cuidado, porque la calle es mala y aquí hay muchos traicioneros. Regrese, Pablo, usted está el mejor, yo lo amo. Para toda la vida, venga mi amor, cuánto lo quiero. Pablo Fresco va. Well, now my dad is gonna glory. I work real hard, I drink corn liquor. That's the truth. <laughs> Woo. These kind of boys seems innocent, Boogie. Got everybody on the post thinking he's a strong black buck. White boys envy his strength, his speed, power in his swing. And this colored champion lets those same white boys call him Shine or Sambo. Well, Lord, and he just smiles. Dream about the time when I was a little boy. Can't talk. The night would get blue. Can barely read or write his own name. I don't care. You tell you they like him. But it Colored folks ain't supposed to have but so much sense. Yes, it would. You know the 
damage one ignorant Negro can do. We were in France in the first war. We had won decorations. But the white boys had told all them French gals that we had tails. Then they found this ignorant colored soldier. Paid him to tie a tail to his ass and run around half naked making monkey sounds. They put him on a big round table in the cafe Napoleon. Put a reed in his hand, crown on his head, blanket on his shoulders and made him eat bananas in front of all them Frenchies. Oh, the white boys danced that night. Passed out leaflets with that boy's picture on it. Called him Moonshine. King of the monkeys. And when we slit his throat, do you know that fool asked us what he had done wrong? Daddy told me we got to turn our backs on his kind, Wilkie. Close our ranks to the chitlins, the collard greens, the cornbread style. We are men, soldiers. And I don't intend for our race to be cheated out of its place of honor and respect in this war because of fools like CJ. You watch everything he does. Everything. Oh, I'm sorry. I was muted. You couldn't hear me. I got it. I'm back. Thank you for joining me, Pablo Frescobar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I have some audio difficulty. Let's try it again. Thank you. It is your boy, Pablo Frescobar, coming at you on a Sunday afternoon. Let's give a round of applause for uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks, uh, the women of the South Carolina Gamecocks for winning the national championship. There we go. Give it up to them. Give it up to Caitlin Clark for an amazing season. And, uh, man, she captured the imagination of everybody thinking, man, this is this women's basketball. This hits different now. It hits real different. Um, the skill level is much higher than it's ever been from all of the girls, not just her, all of the girls, all of the ladies, excuse me, women. They're not girls. They're women. Right. Um, yeah, man, I found it very fascinating and exciting, and I will be following the WNBA this year. Um, and, uh, I got a special surprise for y'all. Uh, when I go to a WNBA game this year, you know, Pablo liked the name drop the people that I know, but this time you really going to get to meet one of the big bosses that I know that's friends of mine, uh, that I grew up with when I went to college. So shout out to her. But anyway, tonight, I wanted you to see me live in the flesh. No avatar, no none of that. 
I wanted you to see that I am a mature gentleman, as you can see by the grays, right? You can see the grays on your boy. Cigar in hand. I, I, I enjoy a cigar, too, and some, some whiskey on occasion. Today is one of those occasions. It's called Sunday. <laughs> yeah, Sunday is an occasion. For people that work real jobs and have real careers like me. Because it's hard out here. It's hard out here to be a man. But I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I wouldn't trade masculinity for anything in the world. God bless the ladies, the women. Love them. But being a man is quite a privilege quite a privilege and I don't disrespect that privilege I lean into it I lean into the responsibility um, being able to recognize uh, your weaknesses your blind spots and as I discussed maybe last week I had a blind spot I had a blind spot for the young fellas. And I should. I, we should lean with, in with young people uh, with understanding. Right? Because we were once there. We were once there. We once were young and, and you know, not much filter and not much uh, apprehension. And that's that can be a beautiful thing. It can be a beautiful thing. It really is. But today I want to juxtapose that with maturity, right? With uh, acquired tastes, with uh, discernment, wisdom, right? Because with experience comes learning and wisdom, right? So it's not enough to criticize the young fellas and not offer up something different. Offer up something. Well, what should we be doing, Pablo? Tell me. glad you asked I'm glad you asked so tonight I'm going to revisit situation with Austin but I'm not just picking on Austin he's not the only one um, I'm going to show you guys another video by another content creator who found himself <clears throat> in some trouble in time Thailand or almost getting his his wig pushed back by some Thai men uh, thinking he can behave in the ways that he does in the United States or whatever countries they were going to. These guys were doing real asshole things. And uh, he was the friend of a one guy named Johnny Somali. And apparently this Johnny Somali guy was going around the world doing pranks. And ended up in jail in in, in uh, Japan. Well, his his partner his partner took the show on back on the road to Thailand while Johnny Somali is locked up in a Japanese prison or wherever he is. I don't know. And apparently got himself into a scrape as well. But first. Let's juxtapose some situations and circumstances. First, I want to show you. I want to show you Austin's video for those 
who don't know, Austin's video in Cartagena. He was also hanging out with my boy Jay. There he is from the Jay Curve. We're going to be featuring uh, one of Jay's videos tonight on our Grown Man Show. Shout out to the Grown Ass Men. It's going to be it's going to be a Grown Ass Men show tonight. It's going to be it's going to be some grown man shit tonight. That's why I got cigars and whiskey. No breast milk. No breast milk tonight, my nigga. Ain't no breast milk. Ain't no breast milk tonight. <laughs> we not on breast milk tonight. Okay? So, let's start with Austin's encounter in the Wall City uh, while filming, and and let's let's take a look at that interaction, shall we? Hey, we're not filming you. We going this way. Oh, we can't be right here filming. Oh, so which way do I need to go then? Well, I'm just advising you because it sounds like you know which way I need to go. So which way do I need to? Because I'm a. Well, let me let me ask you though. I'm a tourist though. So which way should the tourist film it? The tourists because you. You don't need to be filming anyone around here. Okay, look, I'll turn it this way so I feel myself. You you don't film yourself. You film yourself. No, I said I'll turn it this way so I feel myself. <laughs> now film yourself. Yeah, that's now you film yourself before you not film yourself. Yeah, that's why I said I said I turn it around. All right, we'll go. Okay, it's. Hey, we're not filming you. We going this way. Now I want you to look over here to the right. There's a girl, a woman that comes in in view, and she says, "Por qué grabas? Why are you filming?" Let me give you some context. The mayor of Cartagena, just maybe a month and a half ago, attempted to clean up the um, open prostitution in the streets. Right? They moved them away from the clock tower and disperse them, right, in an attempt to make the city more family-friendly. They didn't want that, that, that trade being plied out in the open, right? It was a big uh, to-do about this in Cartagena. Maybe Austin was not aware of this. And so many foreigners had come down Many YouTubers, vloggers had come down to Cartagena and were filming this and showing the girls on the streets. And it was drawing an unsavory crowd, right? This is the backdrop. And so what they didn't want is images of their city plastered across the world as an open brothel. That's that's the context that we're playing in. So let's listen again, because I want you to hear when she says, Por que grabas? It's the filming of the girls that is problematic. Here we go. You film yourself before you know film yourself. Yeah, that's why I said I said I'd turn it around. All right, we'll go. Okay, it's. Hey, we're not filming you. We going this way. Oh, we can't be right here filming. Oh, so which way do I need to go then? I don't. I don't care where you want to go. Go wherever. Well, I'm just advising you because it sounds like you know which way I need to go. So which way do I need to? Because I'm a. Well, let me let me ask you though. I'm a tourist though. So which way should the tour? (sighs) 
we're gonna we're gonna revisit this comment as well. I'm a tourist, though. When I show you this other video, you're gonna hear similar uh please, uh excuses, reasons, rationales, reasons. Gentlemen, nobody gives a shit that you're a tourist. They don't care. They just want you to stop doing whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. Okay? Nobody cares. You're an American. Nobody cares. You're a tourist. I, I don't know what it is about Americans. They think throwing that shit out is some magic bullet that's going to, like, change some shit. It's not. It's pro it, it, it probably It might make it worse. It might make it worse. Okay, look, I'll turn it this way so I feel myself. No, I said I'll turn it this way so I feel myself. Now, film yourself. Yeah, that's you film yourself before you know film yourself. Yeah, that's why I said I said I'd turn around. All right, I think we have an understanding about what went on there, right? We have an understanding. Now I'm going to show you another video from another content creator who lives in Medellin. He's been living in Medellin for seven years. He is American. But he does speak Spanish, and I believe he is Latino. He is not Colombian, however. Not Colombian. That's important. And I want you to juxtapose what's different when he goes somewhere to film that the locals don't want him to film in. I, I want you to watch his reaction and his response. Are we ready? Let's go. Okay, so we are arriving to the neighborhood it's called Pablo Escobar. This neighborhood is literally called Pablo Escobar. Let me give you some history. This neighborhood was literally built brick by brick. It used to be a landfill. And Pablo Escobar bought the land and began building houses for the homeless people. The city will not recognize it as a neighborhood called Pablo Escobar. They won't recognize it on the map, although the locals there call it exactly that. I want you to watch as that girl who walks by in that first frame what she does when she sees that camera. All right, guys, so we are arriving to the neighborhood it's called Pablo Escobar. Here in Medellin. All right, guys, so we are arriving to the neighborhood it's called Pablo Escobar. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? All right, guys, so we are arriving to the neighborhood it's called. You see that? What did she do? She covered her face. She covered her face. Guys, I want to tell you. Colombia is not a place for vlogging. 
if you want to walk around willy nilly with your camera, video and everything, you a millennial, you're used to recording everything, having your cell phone out and doing all that extra shit. This, this is not the place for you. This is not the place for you. This is not the country for that. I'm not saying you can't record. I'm saying you can't record everywhere on the streets, in every barrio. You have to be a little more careful in Colombia. It requires tact and thoughtfulness. That's all I'm saying. Let's continue to watch. Pablo Escobar here in Medellin. And this is the place I told you that people look at Pablo Escobar differently than the rest of Colombia. Right here they have a mural for the man himself. I never really went into depth about this guy before on my channel. I talked a little bit. I didn't want to give too much light to him, but this neighborhood does exist here. And actually the, the mayor's office here in Medellin, they want to make this neighborhood non-existent. Actually, if you look on Google Maps or try to find it on the map in Alcaldia, you're not going to find this neighborhood under the name Pablo Escobar. You're going to find it under a different name. So, but this is the neighborhood that he built when he was running for presidency. For him to get more votes, what he did was he, he gifted a bunch of houses. This used to be a dump site. This used to be a very bad area. And what he did was he built a bunch of houses with electricity and everything and gifted them to people who live in the streets. That was a way for him to get more votes to get people to, to elect him to presidency. So I asked you the question, do you guys think it was for from the goodness of his heart or for other motives? If you guys have seen Narcos on Netflix, I recommend you actually check out Patron de Mal because that's probably the best documented series about what happened during the time here in the 80s and 90s in Medellin when he was doing his thing. Buenas. No, porque. All right, guys, so it's kind of crazy, but uh, that monument, they're not letting people film there anymore. You're going. Did you hear that and did you see that? Let me play it again. Doing his thing. Buenas. No, porque. All right, guys. So no videos. <laughs> no videos. What did he do? When the man told him no videos, what did he do? Did he get in a pissing contest? As to why and what for? Or did he immediately turn off the goddamn camera? Let me show you again. For the people in the back. I recommend you actually check out Patron de Mal because that's probably the best documented series about what happened during the time here in the 80s and 90s in Medellin when he was doing his thing. Buenas. No, porque. All right, guys, so it's kind of crazy, but uh, that monument, they're not letting people film there anymore. You're going to take pictures, so I took a few pictures. And the reason is because a lot of content creators, I think mostly in Spanish, came here and made videos. And the way they edit the videos, they make it seem like these guys here only think good things about Pablo Escobar, which is not entirely true. They know that he did bad things, but they're showing like the the good of this bar and what with the good thing that he did. And because of those videos, they got backlash from people here in Medellin 
didn't like how they were speaking. And I think it's probably because they probably said many things that were just edited out of the video. So right when I saw Now I understand to Americans, Colombia has this menacing reputation, uh, uh, the, you know, land of free drugs and sex and all of that. But Colombians are very protective of their image. They're very sensitive about it. And when you go running around willy nilly with the damn with the camera in your hand, they don't. They don't particularly take kindly to it in all situations. Again, discernment, wisdom, knowledge. You need a little bit of this to operate in this environment. That's all I'm saying. And the thing with young guys is young guys' inhibitions are low. They're young, dumb, and full of cum to excuse my cum. They got testosterone out their ass. The first thing they think about is confrontation. Older guys, hey, man, we don't want no trouble. There's a reason we got to be older. There's a reason we got to have gray hair. We know when to hold them and know when to fold them in the words of Kenny Rogers. Okay. I, here we go. This video gets even more interesting. He's going to have another situation and I want you to see how he handles that situation. Here we go. On my camera, they told me no video, no YouTube, no nothing. It's done. So... But they said, come up in the neighborhood, neighborhood's safe. You can talk to the uh, the grandmas, la abuelas, las abuelas, they're noble. They're good people, nobody's gonna touch you. So let's go throughout the neighborhood, let's get lost, and let's go talk to some people here in the barrio Pablo Escobar. I think most people that have done videos here, they haven't come this high. And what, I've seen a few videos and the most they do that little area that's like right there I've never seen anybody go up high let me explain the significance of quote unquote going up high in the hills in Medellin the lower the elevation the more uh, expensive for the locals it is to live the rent is lower right the rent is lower the higher you go up, the less expense, excuse me, the rent is higher. Excuse me. The lower it is, the higher the rent. For the locals, the lower the elevation, the higher the rent. That's why Poblado, which is almost flat, is super expensive. The higher you go up in the hills in Medellin, the more money it costs, uh, the less money it costs. So the higher you go, the more sketchy the neighborhood gets. Remember that. He said, I never seen anybody go up high. He about to go up high. So let's go up high and see what we can find. Oh, nice. Hi. So let's see what this this neighborhood here is very similar to a lot of the communas in Medellin you can find. And up in the communas you have the stairs and all these houses built on top of each other. Buenas. Todo bien? Opa. Nice. Yeah. Hola, buenas. Qué pena. Acá está bien para subir. Sí. Sí, está seguro. Sí. Viven acá. Sí. Ah, bueno. Para, para algún lugar en especial, ¿no? No, solo conociendo. Conociendo. Bueno. Oh, 
ustedes son fuertes, suben no es el lomo. Es, es, todos los días, ¿sí o no? Sí, señor, claro. Costumbres. Para mantener joven. Sí, señor. So guys, let me know what y'all think, but uh, yeah, these people are very grateful for what he did because they gave him houses for free, basically. And they're so grateful that they want to make this neighborhood safe or protected because neighbors around it, if I was to walk around like this with a camera, it wouldn't be allowed. One more time. That guy's looking at me. I thought that guy was going to talk to me. Why not? I want you to pay attention to this interaction. I want you to pay special attention to this interaction. See the guy in the blue with the white hat washing the motorcycle? I want you to, I want you to watch this and listen. Uh, I thought that guy was going to talk to me. Buenas. Or no? Is that you about to go back? Or no? Can you go back? Where is it? Where is it? Is it better or what? Yes, it's better. Hey. And there is danger or what? Yes. Ah, no. Mejora. Ah, listo. Gracias. A lo mejor en ese lado. En ese lado. Esa. Ah, bueno. Listo. Then the rest of Colombia. Did you see that part where he's <laughs> with a guy in the blue? I want to show that again. Let's see if I can find it again. I want to I want you to see that part. That's very important. They make it seem like these guys here only think good things about Pablo Escobar, which is not entirely true. They know that he did bad things, but they're showing like the the good of this bar and what with the good thing that he did and because of those videos they got backlash from people here in Medellin didn't like how they were speaking and I think it's probably because they probably said many things that were just edited out the video so right when they saw my camera they told me no video no YouTube no nothing it's done so but they said come up in the neighborhood neighborhood safe you can talk to the uh, the grandmas la Buenas. Todo bien. Para pa algún lugar en especial, ¿no? No, solo con For free basically. And they're so grateful. Mejor o okay. qué? Mejor. Buenas. Todo bien. Ah, está bien. Did you hear that whistle? Did you hear the whistle? In the words of that great poet, too short, blow the whistle. And I don't think a lot of young fellas that didn't grow up in the crack era like some of us understands what that means. They don't understand the whistle. I was going to talk to me. Buenas. Or no? Is that you about to go back? Or no? Can you go back? Por eso. Por eso es más seguro. Mejor, ok. Hey. Y por allá es como peligroso, ok. Hey. Ah, no. Mejora. 
Ah, listo. Gracias. A lo mejor en este lado. En este lado. Eso. Ah, bueno. Listo. What the guy in the hat and the blue shirt did was go up and tell those guys back there in the back, hey, somebody's coming through. There's a video camera. He's got a camera. Get away. See? He actually did him a favor by going and telling them, hey, I sent him the other way. Get away from the camera. Right? They were out on the street, and then when he told them, hey, somebody's coming, go that way. I, I'm sending him the other way. Guess what? They scurried away. When somebody asks you to do something in a place like Columbia, like put up your camera, the only proper response is okay. You're right, St. Sia. You understood the signal. Yeah. But trust me, everybody don't understand it. Everyone doesn't understand it. These young boys, a lot of them, they don't understand it. They don't know what that means. So I'm just saying, you got... I do not believe YouTube is a career. It's not a career. It'll have you doing all kinds of risky shit to try to earn money, to get views, to do all kinds of stuff so you can stay on the road. It's a risky business. Done this way, it's a risky business. And this is a guy that lives in Medellin for seven years and is fluent in Spanish and understands the culture. And he is taking a risk. Huh. I don't know, I'm getting a bad vibe about this. I might just go back down. Ah. Yeah, I'm gonna go back down. Again, bad vibe. Let's go. I'm pretty sure those guys are being honest. But it's gotta. I don't know, I'm getting a bad vibe about this. I might just go back down. Ah. Yeah, I'm gonna go back down. Getting a bad vibe. Let's go. I'm getting a bad vibe. I'm going back down. I'm getting a I'm getting a bad vibe. I'm I'm out. That's 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 all I'm saying. When you get a bad vibe, man, you gotta you gotta you gotta cut. You gotta cut. Cut. Cut it. Get out of there. It's not being scared. It's not being a punk. It's none of that, man. It's just, just, it's spidey senses. Trust those vibes. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you do something other than that, this is is what I have to say to you. I want to ask you some real simple questions and I want some real simple answers. You understand? So let me get this right. You bought the bottle of beer about 11.15? Yeah, I bought the beer and I accidentally dropped it. You bought 
the bottle of beer at 11.15. At 11, yeah, at, at 11.15, I, yeah, 11.15. Then why wasn't the bottle cleaned up? Why did we find it still there, spilled on the floor after the shoot? When I was, after we was leaving, after, after I left, other people was coming in they, when we was leaving. But you don't remember what they But they looked. I, but you bought the bottle of beer definitely at 12 15. Yeah, it was 12 15. Exactly. If I'm not mistaken, it was now you see something. Now you see now. You done fucked up, you know that, don't you? I see. You know what I'm saying? I, no, I. I thought... No, so, you know what I'm saying? You done I, fucked up now. You know that, don't you? <laughs> don't fuck up. Don't, don't, don't fuck up. Okay? Don't fuck up. Now, I have another, um, I have another video I want to share with you guys. Um, from one of the from another content creator. From another content creator. And this one is in Thailand. This one is in Thailand. And this one is particularly disturbing to me. Very disturbing. At least Austin's was somewhat of an accident. At least Austin's was somewhat of an accident. This was no- After bothering people in Japan, getting knocked out in their streets and then thrown in jail, his buddy is continuing this was no accident. This per person is This person is This person is purposefully Excuse me guys, I had to lower the uh lower the um resolution so it wouldn't freeze up on us but this person is going out and deliberately pulling pranks doing ignorant shit to try to get views and likes i hope austin is not there yet i hope and pray he's not there i hope but he's 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 towing he's towing up to the line like Steph Curry. He's putting his toe right on the line. His latest stunt was was <laughs> selling uh, dating coach material. The irony. The irony. So this is not Johnny Somali. This is his friend that was his videographer in Thailand. Let, let's see what he's up. After bothering people in Japan, getting knocked out in their streets, and then thrown in jail, his buddy is continuing their legacy in Tel Aviv. But this guy is now quickly realizing Thailand is not Japan. I don't know. 
belong. Hey, yo, 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 I'm t yo, 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 I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, I pay, I pay, I pay money, I pay money, I pay money, I pay, I pay, I pay. No, no, I take, I take, I take off, I take off, look, 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 wait, 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 yeah, I give, I give money, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. I know Thailand has a reputation of being safe, but uh, do these uh, four or five Thai guys who probably know fucking Muay Thai, do they look safe? Do these five Muay Thai guys, uh, the Thai, uh, guys from Thailand, do they look safe to you? Yeah, it's safe if you mind your damn business. If you mind your business, you go knocking shit over and breaking stuff that don't belong to you, it get real dangerous quick now, doesn't it? I thought the Thai, I thought Thailand, I thought the Thai guy, I thought it was safe. I thought it was non-threatening. Thought it was safe and non-threatening, Thailand. Look at that. You see all those guys in black shirts with the same thing across the front? Do that look like they, you know, they just going to pray to Buddha and let you go? I don't, I don't think they just going to pray to Buddha and let you go. Yeah, Thailand is safe. But you better watch yourself. Pay money. I, I pay money. I pay. I pay. I pay. I take. I, no, no. I take. I take off. I take off. Look, 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 look. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I give. I give money. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. No. And he quickly transitioned into a coward, as apparently this wasn't the first time he got pressed in Thailand. I'm YouTuber. YouTuber. Yo, stop, stop. Don't do that. 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 I'm American. I'm American. What is with the I'm American? Can somebody please in the chat? What 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 the what the fuck is the I'm American shit? The I'm a tourist thing. What 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 the hell does that mean? What does I'm American? I'm a tourist. What what does what does that mean? I'm I'm baffled. I don't understand. It's a safe word for losers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm American is a cry for help. Yeah. Tell me the chat chat. Tell me <laughs> what does I'm American. I'm a tourist. The, the, tell me what that translates in Negro ease. Cause I only speak Negro ease. I speak Negro, Negroese. I need to under this. My only is is my second language. Excuse me, third language. I speak English. I speak Spanish, and I speak Negroese. I need to know in Negroese, which is I'm least fluent. What does that mean? It means if he said if he says that he'll leave him alone. Oh, I'm American. I'm a tourist. It means, please don't fuck me up. <laughs> please don't fuck me up. Please don't fuck me up.
Yeah, I think you got it, Kevin. I think you got it. Well, the reputation of America being great and powerful nation means everyone is going to acquiesce and, and let you do what the fuck you want. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And they're going to leave you alone and they're not going to kick your ass or kill you or cut your throat. I, I guess that's what it means. I guess that's what it means. I'm American. God damn it. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to use it. I'm not going to use it abroad. I'm going to use that shit right here in America. I'm going to use it right here in America. I'm going to use it down uh, in Atlanta. I'm going to be out at the, at the bar or at a uh, in a mall, and I'm going to be like, Psh. I'm going to go to the mall of Georgia right here in Buford. I'm going to pull up on a chick and be like, bitch, I'm American. What's up? Don't use it. I'm going to go down to the uh, over there off of Bankhead, what used to be Bankhead. Now they call it something else. They're Hamilton E. Holmes. I'm going to go down there to Hamilton E. Holmes and Old, or, or Old National, and I'm going to tell them I'm American. For real, though. I'm a, I'm a tourist. There's one particular street in a city I used to work for in DeKalb County. The street was so bad. I, when I used to have to go down there to do inspections on houses, I had to take the police with me. I had to take the police on this one, on this street, open air drugs, all of that. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to say, Negroes, I am American. I am a tourist. It didn't work. Okay. All right. I'm just asking. I'm just, I'm asking for a friend. I'm just asking for a friend. All right. You want to fight? All right. That's okay. 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 You got it. You got it. You got it. Okay, I leave. Okay. All right, all right, all right. And for some reason, it always disproportionately irritates me when travelers go to other countries, offend the locals and their culture, but then try to deflect with, I'm an American, as if that's some sort of Harry Potter spell that protects you from consequences in the third world. Because if he gets tossed into a Thai prison, even though he looks like he does, I don't think he plays in the WNBA, so I doubt Biden would be freeing him anytime soon. Because he's not the first tourist to flex first world citizenship. I would like the American police right here, right now. North Canada! North Canada, please, man! See ya! See ya, bro! But back to the nuisance streamers flexing their fatherless antics as some sort of career path because I'm beginning to think it's not working as they're continuously being banned from streaming platforms as it pretty much destroys their brand. But the platform he's currently advertising shows him struggling to raise $200. And apparently he's been at this for a while, barely bringing in 100 bucks in a couple of weeks, where some of his streams barely even see 10 views. And I'm not going to sit here and flex numbers because I know everybody starts from somewhere. Just because a streamer only gets 10 views a day doesn't mean in six months that can't easily turn into 1 million. But I really want to know if this is just an insane amount of confidence or just outright delusion. The thing getting knocked out in Japan, thrown in jail, possibly having to snitch against your friend moving down to thailand to likely repeat the same cycle again to what looks like less money than a single shift at mcdonald's you would think this just wouldn't seem worth it anymore not to mention the long time damage to your public image because whether it's a job a college or even a girl he's trying to date in the future all it takes is for one person to recognize him from those videos of when he got popped like a pinata in japan for them to instantly lose all respect for him so just like the not somalian kid i genuinely hope he can just turn his life around cease the live streams and stop being a walking reminder of what happens when you're raised without a strong father figure but if you appreciate my concise light order commentary on the tragic status that is today's reality hopefully i've earned your subscription then go check out the video on how his buddy finally found out in tel aviv
Well, well, well. Here we are. That's why I say travel game is grown man business. This is grown man business. This is grown man business. Get your whiskey and your cigars up, gentlemen. This is some grown man business. It is what it is. Now, you say, Pablo, well, what are we supposed to do? What the fuck are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to earn a living and be abroad and do all of this other crap? I got you. I got you. And so tonight, I'm going to feature a couple of my, my friends. A couple of my friends who also have YouTube channels, who are also grown-ass men. They are grown ass men, in fact. And I want you to see how they roll. Because it's not enough to criticize. It's up to us as the older gentlemen to lead the way. First, I'm going to share a gentleman who spent time with Austin. And that is my man, Big Play Jay. Shout out to Jay. Um, um, I'm going to share. One of Jay's videos, which is short. Of he and his beautiful Colombiana at a nice bar called. Sky Bar 51. 51 Sky Bar in Cartagena. Shout out to you, Jay. Yeah, Jay's in the building. There he is. Let's let the J curve show you how it's done. Let's 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 let him show you how. What's up, guys? It's Jay from the J Curve. Yeah, man. So I'm here at Sky Bar 51 with my girl here. Say hola. Hi. All right, yes. So, guys, this is a beautiful place. You got to check out this beautiful place. Yeah, man. Beautiful view. So, guys. Guys, get your passports. I promise. Just work. Tune into the J curve. Peace. Now, Jay has a cornucopia of videos doing it grown man style the way I like. Let's check out some more. Let's check out some more at Sky Bar 51. Baby, 
Man. What's up, guys? It's Jay. Man, Jay's looks so much more interesting, doesn't it? It looks so much more interesting. Let's watch some more from, from Jay here. Uh, just, just to show Jay is also an outdoorsman. Yes, he's an outdoorsman. So we gotta we gotta see what his outdoor game look like. Oh, yeah. And Jay, I'm sure, had his lovely lady with him on this uh, excursion outside. See, old niggas, we outside, too. We outside, man. We are outside. We are outside. Let's see what else Jay is putting down. Oh, here's another from Jay. Here's another. He's very diverse. Jay is very diverse. Let's check it out. But Jay, I have a concern. I have a concern. Un poco peligroso. Un poco peligroso. La mujeres. La mujeres bunda. La mujeres culo. Es muy peligroso. The only danger, Jay, is the hips on this woman. The hips on this woman moving and shaking about like that is very dangerous. It's muy peligroso. La mujeres culo is muy peligroso. Señor Dajek LJ Curve. It's muy peligroso. You need to be more careful, Jay. You need to be more careful. See, because grown man business, grown man business, sir, is not for the faint of heart. Necesita mucho mechismo. Necesita mucho mechismo. You need to be a man. You need to be strong. Jay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Jay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm I'm very disappointed in you, Jay. I'm very disappointed. Do you know the danger that you were in here, Jay? What can we learn from this, Jay? What can we learn about putting yourself in these types of situations? What can we learn? Now, just in case you thought Jay was the end of this old Negro foolery. You thought this was the end. No, there's more old Negro foolery. Yes, Jay, thank you for sharing your, your channel. I'm a little busy. So, yes, drop your channel, please. Go subscribe to the Jay Curve. Now, Jay is not the only one. He is not alone. He is not alone in this grown-ass man tomfoolery. He is not alone. My brother, who I was very critical of, a one Mr. Black Man Travels, a.k.a. Canal, he also is involved in some grown-ass man foolery. And I want to show you that foolery right now because it's very important. It's muy, muy, it's muy importante. It's muy importante. That I show you how to, how to move about. So let's go to another grown-ass man video in Colombia. Let's go. Oh, 
So, you know, there are ways that this passport, bro, uh, lifestyle can be documented on social media. There are ways to do this. And Ray, this is a different BMT. It's not the BMT that's live right now. It's a different BMT. There, there's like three of them to be on YouTube. I know it's confusing, but it is what it is. So, shout out to Canal for for that. But I have another. Yes, sir. Big brother, may I have another? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. You may have another. You absolutely may have another. I got another from the millionaire resident of the Passport Bros. He goes by the name of J. Clyde. Let's see what J. Clyde is putting down. Let's see what J. Where, where, does, where does J. Clyde go to get in all this danger? Where does he go to get in all this, all this, this dangerous barrios and and filming hoes and all of this? I need to see where Brother J. Clyde is and what 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 he's doing. Let's see what J. Clyde is putting down over here. Okay, I gotta see. Let me cue it up.
Uh, oh man, Jay Clyde didn't show y'all no hoes. Oh, that's what it is. Jay Clyde didn't show you no hoes. Okay, he didn't show you no chicks. I understand. I understand. I understand. But Jay Clyde got a baddie. Trust and believe. Jay Clyde got a baddie. I, 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 I seen him moving. I seen him moving. He's in Brazil right now. He is in Brazil right now on Copacabana. And he ain't filming. <laughs> He is enjoying life. But before I end this soliloquy, I have to go to the Michael Jordan. I got to go to the Michael Jordan of this black male travel content. I got to go to the big poppy. I got to go to the big poppy. Do y'all know his name? Do y'all know the big poppy of the black male travel space on YouTube? Do y'all know his name? Put his name in the chat if you think you know. Put his name in the chat. His his. Put his name in the chat if you know who I'm talking about. Because he is a big dog. Remember, Columbia is for grown-ass men. Oh, somebody said it in the chat. Somebody said it in the chat. Somebody said it in the chat. Oh, I'm about to cue it up. I'm about to cue it up. Give me a second. I'm going to cue it up. top of my mind. That's either Medellin, Colombia, or anywhere in Thailand because of the cost of living. All about first world living at third world prices. And what inspired this video, I was out with my boy OJ in New York at this nightclub called One Oak. And if you know anything about this place, it ain't cheap. And so we got a deal, right? We got a deal for 1500 and we came with two bottles. And I was like, Shh. It. I ain't doing this anytime soon. And I started to think about like, what does it cost to do you know, a weekend in a city right? If you're in LA, if you're in Miami, if you're in Vegas. And I was like, yo, it's not cheap. If you're making 40,000, you're gonna be pouring this on credit cards or you're just gonna be like, I'm saving for a couple of years for this trip. And so right now I live in beautiful Medellin, Colombia. And the cost of doing a weekend right out here is on another planet a flights down here are really easy right from chicago where i'm from it's about 500 round trip and they have all of these different flash sales or if you leave from new york i see 300 round trip and that's like the same price as going to miami new york or something similar on the flip side you have thailand which i really love but you're looking at a thousand dollars plus as well as a 24 hour flight so that's where you know the big difference coming but i highly recommend thailand i, I couldn't recommend mentality enough you got the dogs barking out here but it's all good oof, oof. the major difference between colombia and thailand is you can walk more than four feet without running into a tourist and i love tourists but it's just more of a cultural experience you know without you know so many people catering to tourists right now but people are mad friendly out here they're like oh that's pretty much as far as my spanish go i need to improve it hola mamacita hola bonita hola that's pretty much all i know tourism down here hasn't completely taken off because they still have that negative perception of that it's a hole basically overrun by narcos but that could not be the furthest thing from the truth it's such an ignorant point of view
And so I just want to take you around with me here for the next few days so you can see what's possible here if you come down here for a weekend. My specific little neighborhood here is called San Lucas Poblado. It's one of the most exclusive neighborhoods here in the country. What I want to do is just kind of take you around my crib right now so you can find out, you know, how much does it cost for a crib like this, if you wanna come down and run it through Airbnb. So this is 5,000 square feet, five bedrooms, plus a maid's quarters, which is like a real bedroom. And it has a very open floor plan, you know, great for entertaining when my friends are over, everyone can be in different places of the crib. So this place is 10 million pesos a month, which is equivalent to about $3,400 US. And then I also pay my electricity and internet bill, which is about $400. So you're looking at about 3,800 a month for living expenses here. Something equivalent if i had like a six month lease in like chelsea in new york for this size place it'd probably be somewhere around thirty thousand a month if you're coming down just for a weekend right something like this would be about four hundred dollars um, a night through airbnb and then if you're not doing the airbnb option you know they've got hotels here which you know are really cool anywhere from 70 to like 140 bucks a night and they come with like breakfast in great locations really safe and one of the things that you can do too is use something like Hotwire and Ebates. You can pretty much cut that uh, price in half to like $50 a night or $40 a night. And if you're not familiar how to use that, I wrote a whole blog post. You'll see the link in the description where I describe, you know, how to take advantage of that. And now let's talk about taking care of the crib, right? We need someone to help because one of the things that we do is we work and work out a lot at home. It's time to work out, man. I got some fitness goals. So my brother is the leader in the house when it comes to this fitness stuff, abnormal fitness. I'm trying to get more like him. He's my inspiration, like for for real, for real, when it comes to this game. And I gotta, like, just being real, I wanna have a six pack like my brother. And uh, so I gotta put in this work. <laughs> Don't get this on film. Finishing up this workout. Uh, Feeling a little bit tight, but we're about to really get this day started. About to go get some fresh, so clean, hop a shower, and probably get dirty again. One of the things that's really important for us is that we eat right. And so I have basically a third mom down here, and her name is Marta. And she's just amazing. She does it all here. I don't know how my life would function without her, literally. Because minimum wage is 650000 um, a month here, that's what most service workers get here. But, you know, Marta does such an amazing job for us. You know, I pay her, you know, a million a month. And, but that is equal to, I think about $300, maybe $350 a month US. And she comes, you know, five days a week. And, you know, she comes at 9 a.m. and she leaves at five, you know, every single day. And if you had something comparable, you know, in New York, you'd be looking at like four or 5,000, you know, a month. But I'm leaving here on August 26th. So one of the things is Marta is not coming with me. So if you need, you know, an amazing woman, I couldn't recommend Marta enough. You know, my assistant, uh, uh, just basically, you'll see an email address here, info at passportheavy.com. I'm, I'm so slow, I don't even know what the, oh, my own assistant's email is. <laughs> Get in contact with her and she'll uh, direct you to uh, Marta if you want to do that. This food's so good. I, mm, you can always count on Marta to have a good meal out here never fails i work online i have an online marketing company so i get to you know experience you know the great benefits of you know making us dollars but spending in uh in pesos so you're not going to stay in your airbnb or your hotel the entire time there's so many amazing activities to do out here and one of my favorite places there's a place called Mahalo's. I was actually just Googling the best view in Medellin and this spot came up for food and sunset views. But when we got there, we found out there was so much more to do than just eat and have a drink. They had paintballing, they had like dirt bikes. It's basically, it's an action sports spot. So we went back the next day, you get 200 rounds of balls and light that ass up. We're ready for battle. They vomit. Thanks And folks, that is not how you roll. Let me try. <laughs> they got like this flower game and then they got food too. And I was like, wow, and that's per person, 55,000 pesos. And then also, while we're on the topic of extreme sports, this was probably my favorite thing to do while I was here in Medellin. It was flyboarding in this spot called Guadalupe. It was about a two hour car ride from here or about a 45 minute helicopter ride. If you don't know what flyboarding is, I'm sure you're watching this footage. The one recommendation that I have, make sure you get a helmet on because if you go up high like me and come down wrong, 
you might just get knocked out. <laughs> but 15 minutes on here is uh, 90,000 pesos, which is about 30 bucks. And then in New York, it's $100 for uh, 15 minutes. And you might be wondering, how am I getting all these prices from New York? I simply just did a Google search and I was like, all right, what does it cost to do here in New York? So everything that you hear me talking about, I just Googled it and saw what the exact price was for the top number one ranked uh, place for paintballing or if it was uh, flyboarding or whatever activity it is that I'm talking about. If you know anything about me, if you've seen my videos before, you know the boy loves to jump on the ATVs, get muddy, get messy. And so there's this place called Medellin Adventure Trails. And they don't just have ATVs, they've got mountain bikes, anything extreme, they have it. And so this is one of my favorite activities. I forgot the price off the top of my head, but you'll see that thing flash across the screen right here. And if you're anything like like me, I definitely know you like to eat. The boy be eating, that's why I gotta work out. So there's this spot real close to Mahalo's, one of the best views in the city. It's called La Mahoria. As soon as you walk into La Mahoria, you can just see that this place is world class. They got all these animals. I don't even know what the hell the name. You know the one with the like the one that's got like the long neck and it's like no, no. Nah. The horses are doing like what the f type trick. They're like, did it, did it, did it. I'm like, I don't even know how they be doing that, bro. But it's crazy. The food there is, I mean, it's amazing. I had the whole squad out. I had some of my friends visiting from all over. I mean, everyone just came out and we went in appetizers, you know, a couple entrees. And the whole meal came to about 500,000 pesos, which is like 150, 160 dollars. Something similar, if that was in New York for 10 people for that caliber of place, you're looking at like seven, 800, maybe a thousand bucks for that type of meal. Cause we went in, we had drinks, I mean, I'm like, yo, my bank account would be hurt if I was trying this in New York or Miami. Say you don't want to go all fancy, you're not bougie, you're just like, yo, let me get a burrito, I'm chill, I just want to get some food. And I would say a typical meal here in Colombia right now with the exchange rate is like for a decent, nice place, it's like five, six bucks per person. And so it's so affordable. Woo! About to get it in. I got my 30th birthday coming up. So the inspiration to get in shape is higher than ever. Being here in Colombia, you see extraordinary looking people every single day. So you surround yourself with that type of inspiration, you're gonna wanna take it to the next level. Right now, it's about mid-July. My birthday's September 24th. So we're gonna see if I put up or I'm just all talk, bro. I'm about to get it in here at the body tech. Let's get it. So I went there and for a whole month, uh, it cost about 220,000 pesos. This is one of the things that's not actually cheaper than like the rest of the world. It's actually more expensive or right on par with, you know, top gyms. So that's about 75 bucks uh, a month. And you know the boy got to stay fresh for the little hair that I got left, right? I headed over to Swaggerific or Swag, I forgot the name, but I know they got something to do with Swag. And they'll get you cut up and beard, hair, everything for 15,000 pesos, which is $4.89. You know how I know? Because I was on Snapchat today and I was talking about it. I went on XE, I was like, yo, I'm at the barber shop. 15,000 is, I went to XE, $4.89. You know what that is in New York? Man, I was in Manhattan, man, visiting my boy Brandon. We are doing some work and I just went up the street. And he's like, 35 bucks. I was like, 35 bucks? Who? What? Like my hair? 35? But even in, in like my hood, I'd be paying 20 bucks, 25 bucks. And I, I'm smashing my hands because I'm so upset when I be thinking about the prices that I be paying. Getting around out here is mad easy. The 15 minute Uber, like around the city is like two, three bucks. Something comparable in New York, you're looking at, you know, 15, 20 bucks for a, a 15 minute Uber. That just shows you how cheap Uber is here. And now the helicopters, it's 220,000 per person. You might be sharing a helicopter with other people, or if you have a group of six, you can just book the whole thing yourself. You know, that's what we did. And one of the things that I would recommend is if you can take a chopper, like if your budget allows, because this is one of the more expensive things, I think it's like close to 4 million pesos uh, to take a chopper from Medellin to Guadalupe. But then if you get to do it and go around the rock, and it's only about 45 minute ride. I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing experience. And so after running around all day eating, you want to relax a little bit. I know the boy does. So one of the things I do is enjoy private massages and no, no happy endings. I know she looks beautiful, but no, we don't get down like that. For a full hour, you're looking at like 90,000 pesos for an hour. She comes to your crib and I actually had a two hour, so I paid, you know, 180,000 and plus gave her a tip. 
And what I'll do, if you want to get a massage from Melissa, she's the homie, she's mad cool. You'll see her information. You'll see a link in the description for a blog post. I'm going to have everything laid out because I always get a bunch of questions. Oh, where was that place? What was the address? Don't worry. Everything's in the link in the description on PassportHeavy.com. So I'm going to bring it full circle. I started with what inspired this video, Nightlife. And I was like, man, I ain't doing that no more. My bank account don't like this. But out here, you know, if you're getting a table in a top spot, you look looking at like 600 to 800,000 for a table and it'll come with two bottles of premium. So you might be getting Ciroc, you might be getting a bottle of Buchanan, Goose, whatever your preference is, you know, that's what'll be at your table and each extra bottle, it's like a hundred dollars to be short. And, but the thing is you don't have to do the premium way. If you want a bottle of like Ron Medellin or they have a thing called Aguadente, they have local liquor or Smirnoff or whatever that it is, they sell cheaper bottles. Cause in America it's like, man, if you're not balling, you can't get, Get no table, you can't get no bottles. Tough on you, when you get money, that's when you can get a bottle. Out here they're like, yo, you want a bottle, we'll give you a bottle. You can spend $30 and you can still get a bottle, you know, in the club, which I really love and I do that quite often. And a lot of times I'm like, I don't even need a bottle. What do I need a bottle for? So you can go out literally with like $20 or $25 for the night and have a great time during the evening. And like I said, I made a blog post uh, on Passport Heaven. You'll see the link in the description. Basically, if I, everything that you need and one of the craziest things we've been traveling around the world for the last seven years and we have content from europe from thailand colombia panama all over the world unreleased we got about a hundred videos to drop so if you're watching this on youtube subscribe if you're watching on facebook make sure you hit that like button um because i want to share this content with you because i believe i truly believe through video we can educate the world on what places are really like today the perception of Colombia is, you know, plastic surgery, cocaine, drugs, but there's so many beautiful things here. It's such a safe place and I've learned so much here. I'm actually going to be buying a house here. That's how much I love it. And I know that's possible for so many other places around the world that are misrepresented, like places in Asia, places in Africa. And I just want to show the world the reality. I'm out of here. I hope you've enjoyed. Leave a comment if you have any more questions or on the blog. I'm out of here. Peace. Oops. Did you guys hear anything I said or was I on mute? I was just talking. Uh, we, we didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> okay. What I said was come up, join the show. The link is pinned to the top of the chat. If you enjoyed this, hit the cash app down at the bottom. Hit the like button. This is a grown man show. This is for the mature gentlemen. This ain't for you young whippersnappers. If you ain't over the age of 35 or 40, I don't want you on this show. I don't want to hear from you. If you're not over 40, don't hit the link. I want to hear you. I don't want to hear from you. Yeah, I got to go with I don't want to hear from This for the grown. Yeah, man, you dark, man. You might as well just turn on your avatar unless you can get some light on you. Uh, I'm going to, okay. The only outlet that works with with the cord I'm, I'm using is is in this room and it's dark, so uh, that's why I'm in this situation. But well, well it's um, a little better. It's a little better now that you turned on the light in your background. What's going on in the Philippines, man? How you how you enjoying life out there so far? 
It is. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, Damien Anderson kept being kind of disappointing. Um, well, it may not matter for some people, but I, I, I use it just to, just for the hell of it. Okay. And um, I really don't need to use it. I just uh, I noticed it was a lot of uh, uh, 304s. <laughs> so um, right. But but they weren't like bad people or anything like that. Um, but it was just it was just. 304s. Very, <laughs> very yeah. transaction. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I try, I try to stay away from that, but <laughs> no, but anyway, um, the, the women here are friendly. Uh, they're nice. Um, you just got to know who to approach. And it's usually like maybe the, the, it may be the one who works at the front desk. It may be the one who works at the cashier. It may be the one who works, um, works a real job, you know, and yeah, every, yeah, everything's fine here. Yeah, but I'm not really here for all that. I'm just you know, you know, here to see see what it's like here. Yeah. Well, I know and you were there. To, I know you were there to visit a lady friend. How did how did that turn out? Someone that you had known for a while but never saw in person. How that? Oh yeah. Out? Oh yeah. That that's fine. Yeah, that went fine. It's just that you know. How could it took so took me so long to get out here? <laughs> that was the only issue, you know. And and, and uh, I was going through some legal problems, and that's what kept me in the U.S. for a while. And um, so now all that's behind me, um, and I can travel more. Yeah, a lot more. Well, well, that's a good look, man. Let me go to my yeah. man. Yo, l well, let me ask you this: Did you see the first part of uh, my show? Well, uh, how much did you catch? But me? Yeah, you. Oh, I, I, I didn't see the uh, first. I see. I just woke up. <laughs> it's well, uh, eight, it, it's eight forty-five a.m. here. I just woke up, so I just caught the last maybe um, thirty minutes. Uh, passport heavy. That part. Okay. 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 Um, basically, what I was pointing out is that uh, you you can go back and watch it, but. Uh, <laughs> Colombia is for grown ass men. Um, the live streaming, videoing in the streets, and all of that kind of stuff—it's not really the place for that. And I pointed that out, uh, and I also pointed out how it can be done in a way uh, that it can work for you. But most of the guys who do it that way are more mature. Guys. And that that was my my point. That is why I show that is why I show passport heavy. That's why I show Jay Clyde. Um, is because um, we guys like that. I also showed uh, uh, black man travels his in Guadalupe. I've been to Guadalupe in, into uh, uh, Bosco Hotel Bosco with the domes and all of that. I've stayed at one of those places, right? I know what that's about. I've been there, right, in, in, in Guadalupe. So there are ways to do content and not put yourself in these compromising kind of crazy situations. I think that the younger guys are so heavily into this reality TV style vlogging that they're putting themselves in, in situations where they have to do more and more risky things for, for the sake of content. And I, I think that's, that's a big difference between, between how they do things and how some of us older guys do things. Just like what my guy said, the people that are on problems in Colombia are reckless, period. People are responsible. Mature and not having any problems at all. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that maybe that sizes it up. Let me go to my man. <laughs> uh, mute yourself for a second. You got an echo in there. It sounds like you're in the bathroom. Uh, yeah. uh no, nah, that's uh, you know, my girl doing laundry right now. Well, so. oh, not you, not you, Jay. <laughs> uh, not you, Jay. Oh, okay. Um, um, okay. Carlos. Yo, Jay. Yeah. What's up, man? Uh, did you like my feature? Yeah, man. First off, I got to say thank you, man, for featuring me on your show, man. I really appreciate that, man. If I keep getting 
features like this, I'm going to have to start talking my big ish, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've gotten a couple of features over the last, I want to say three weeks. So it's been nice, man. I appreciate all you guys and all the work you guys do. Well, I admire the way that you uh, handle your business abroad. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, the way that you do things and the way that you try to help others is also very impactful. And appreciate, appreciate you trying it. to help Austin along. Um, oh, but yeah. like you said, you can't be with him 24-7. And he's a young oh, man. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to stick his foot in it here and there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. that's why I'm here to, sh to show us another way. So, yeah, the title is actually perfect because uh, I agree 100%. Columbia is definitely for the more mature audience because – uh, you, you just can't come out here playing around, man. It's not it's not that type of place. You can you can come out here, you can get your footage, you can you do all that, but you know there's a time and place for it. And one of the things is I'm trying to really tell guys, man, you don't need to talk about everything online. That's the issue. It is you, yeah. you know I know brothers want to quote unquote keep it real, but I'm like, bro. I'm the type of person I tell people, no, you need to have a private life. You don't need to broadcast everything that's going on, especially in these other countries. Um, so, yeah, brothers, brothers just got to, you know, like you said, they have to have some discernment whenever they are dealing in these other countries. But, you know, I can't, you know, I don't have a magic wand. I can't make ninjas act right. So. <laughs> if we if we had that one, I swear I would right. I would have waved it long ago. But uh, yeah, man, yeah, I don't think they they listening anyway. The ones that would want to hear it, they don't watch us. Well, someone didn't tell him to dial it down, and he refused and refused. But he want he wants to throw all his business out there, and then he wants to see all these 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 things that really don't need to be said publicly. Nobody needs to hear about your personal preference. Oh, I like these women, but I don't like these women. That's something to be kept to yourself. Just say what you like and just leave it at that. He just airs out too much of, of what's in his head. And he says some things that he should be saying. Like, oh, man, they always want me to pay for their Uber. Uber just $4 overseas. I mean, damn, please. Nice. Being cheap is not a good look, especially in Africa. It's a real bad look. If you're real cheap, $4 is a lot of money to you. That's gonna be a bad look, you know, stuff like that, you know. Right, right. Yeah, man. I mean, it's you know, I guess it's a, it's a learning process. Um, but you know, from, for now, man, I'm actually I'm in a whole different city. I'm not even in Cartagena right now. I Where are you here to get some peace and quiet? I'm actually in a city called Ibagué. Ah, oh, I've, I've I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, ah, yeah. So a lot yeah. of yeah, a lot of people don't come here. So you know, I'm actually out here. Haven't seen a single American since I've been here. I don't even think I've heard a single word of English since I've been here. So it's uh, a <laughs> you know, I got to get my peace of quiet, and that's another that, that uh, can I would be a say good thing. Grown man trait. Yeah, that's another grown man trait when you get off the actual. Beat and path, path, and you're just yeah. yeah, you're trying to just you know party it up and have women shaking their asses on boats and stuff. Nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. There's a time for that. There's a time for that. There's a time. Yeah, I, I, I'm not saying There's nothing not wrong with that. it, but <laughs> but sometimes you just want to relax and uh, you know smoke a cigar and reflect. Right, 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 right. So I matter of fact, um, on my trip in May. I think I'm going to go to uh, Bubble Sky. I've been to, uh, what is it? Uh, the one that Passport Heavy show, Bosco, Hotel Bosco, the, with the geo, geodesic domes. I've been to that hotel, uh, me and a lady friend. This time for my birthday, I think I'm going to go to Bubble Sky, which is the same thing. It's just a little less expensive. Uh, uh, Bosco is like two nights, 400, over $400. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to go to uh, Bubble Sky, save a little money, but it's the same experience. And so that is that is my plan. Professor Mex has shaved off his beard or something. He's, is that him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like a new man. You look young. You look young. Every once in a while, we have to do these things called fires. And occasionally, we have to practice for the fires. And, uh, and 
to make you go inside this burning building and you got to wear a mask. Right. And so, so the full beard messes up the seal. At least once every six months. It makes me look like a baby, but that's all right. How's everybody right, doing? Well, I'm doing great, Professor Max. So what do you think about my title tonight? Columbia's for grown ass men. Been around. But hey, look, the fresh off the boat, wet behind the ears guys are going to misbehave. There's no way around it. You go there, these are dudes that haven't gotten any any play from any women in a long time. And this will be like their first time. And they're going to be, you know, your your head's going to be on a swivel like the first time in Miami. You'd be like, oh, well, I'm not necessarily you? just talking about the newbies. I'm talking yeah. about. I'm talking about these travel vloggers. That's what I mean. Is that once the they young get that out of their system, once they get that out of their system, they realize they look stupid. Well, most of them realize they have enough, you know, uh, self awareness to know, hey, I'm, but some guys, that's their stick. They want to look stupid. They want to go back to the States and, yeah, I went to Columbia and whatever and, and did this, that, and the third. And, and I videoed it so everybody can. So I can flex. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, guys, I understand the content. I understand the strategy. Yeah. Um, but it comes with its risks. Is my, <laughs> yeah. Is let somebody my rob it in the house. If you flex on your house, guys, you come and you you rent the fancy Airbnb. You know, uh, if you're in Poblado, oh, mira, and look at everybody. Look at look at the view. Look where I am, and all the one of all one of Propagos needs to do. Is hit you up and her boyfriend and say, Yeah, we can meet. And then they rob your house, take all your shit. You know what I mean? So it's a teamwork effort when it comes to uh, um, the bad guys robbing us. So, but guys, the older guys that have enough self awareness lose their shit too. Listen, when I was in Medellin, I had a friend, he's not a friend at all, actually. He was a, he was a prison warden. And he retired after like 35 years, worked for the prison system. He was a simp for this one girl down in Medellin that was like 25, 28 years old. And he's like 50 something. Right. And he's telling me, you know, oh, man, I don't know how to deal with this, man. She keeps asking me for money. And I'm like, well, don't send it to her and see what happens. If you say no and she freaks out, that's the real person you're dealing with, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't play the... It's it's that simple to figure it out. You don't have to be a genius or speak perfect Spanish to know when you're being hustled. And right. us older guys know when we're being hustled because it's an inflection in their voice. It's always like the show, the party voice, the party girl voice. You guys know the party girl voice? I know what you're talking about. That's what it is. It's yeah. exciting, especially if she's a very attractive girl. Most of the guys right. that have been here a while that have been down here a while, will white knight like a motherfucker for a single mom. <laughs> no kidding. They will white knight like they never met a girl in their life before. You know? That's just why I, I understand. I understand the criticism. I ain't that guy, but I'm, I'm we're not <laughs> that's what they is that look guys from the from us guys that are here, the veterans that are here, the dudes that have been down here and said, yeah, that should happen. I'm gonna do that. Taking pictures is the number one way to get robbed. Okay. <laughs> My house in Medellin got robbed before I even moved into the damn thing. The guys who were putting the cabinets on the wall. Oh, I see this guy. I'm leaving my stuff in. These guys stole everything that I brought in. They, they, my, my daughter was visiting me too. They stole her perfume. They stole a charger for her phone. I mean, it was just like ridiculous. Nothing in the house. Nothing. And it was the guys who actually worked in the house. They stole all the light bulbs. Oh, it was bad. But that was my stupid gringo tax that I had to pay because I thought, well, all I got to do is just lock the bomb lock, right? <laughs> Them guys poured through that door like pouring water through a fucking screen. So your girlfriends will set you up if you're not careful. Your maid, your housekeeper, your cook your personal trainer, oh, anybody and everybody within arm's distance of a new guy or a guy with not too much situational awareness, those are your those are the ones that get targeted. The ones that go out a lot, well, like, I don't understand. Did you, if you're a certain age, 
Yeah. Did your did your did your apartment have security though? I mean, was it? No, no, man. I don't. So I, I have yet to ever live around gringos or tourists ever. I only live no. in the hardest, you know, worst places in these countries because that's where I get assigned to. I don't come here because I like it. You think I come to Mexico oh, okay. for the fucking women? Give me a break. I come here for the okay. fucking tacos <laughs> and the forefront. That's it. And the only reason why I would come here, here, is because you could do things in Mexico you can't do in Colombia. For one, is eat good. Number two, is have a phone in your fucking hand when you're walking down the street. Three, you can have a nice car, have a watch. No one's going to steal it from you. But in Colombia, you can't drive there. Can't have nice stuff. You know, uh, wait a minute, wait a no, minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on, Professor Max, uh, hold on. <laughs> I drive I drive in Colombia. Yes, I, I do. do. But I'm one of the veterans. The new guy's not going to be, they're going to, what, you going to buy a BMW while you're there? Or I, ride I mean, I'm not driving there? that. I'm driving like a little damn Kia. with. Yeah, know, I, I drive a Corsa and a bus. <laughs> Which, by the way, I had to cancel this year's men's retreat, which is coming up in August. If you guys know, I got a castle down here. It's a legit, like, ancient castle. And I had a room for, like, 20-some guys. Like, eight guys show up last year. And this year, I wanted to do it again. But the cartel is acting up in where I am in Guanajuato, Mexico. So anybody who's planning on coming in, don't come down here this time of year. No, just, just wait it out. Wait this shit out. I'll probably have another one in November, but I'm a firefighter, but I'm not just any firefighter. I'm an international fucking gringo firefighter from Germany and served in the United States Air Force. So I'm a big old target on my head that says we got to get that guy. So I'm not going anywhere near Guanajuato right now. And I'm actually headed to El Salvador. So any guys want to go check out El Salvador with me, we're going to be headed down in June. Safest place in Central America right now. The most dangerous place in the world right now is the town that I live in in Mexico, over where the castle is. But I'm right in the middle of nowhere, so nobody bothers with us. But old school guys are going to get disrupted eventually. Older guys that are down here, if you haven't got a like a routine where you get up in the morning and you go to the gym and you come back and your girlfriend or your wife makes you breakfast and a protein shake, and then you start studying or reading or whatever it is that you do, but you get out and you become productive. If all you do is sit in your Airbnb, drink, smoke, and order girls, you're never going to experience the real life life in Colombia. I live out in the and so, Professor Max, Professor Max, I have a question. Well, well, two questions. One from one of the viewers. Mm -hmm. Please explain the party girl voice. And then my question, after you answer that. Okay. What do you know about Mexico City? I've been wanting to visit Mexico City. I'm not. I'm not one of. I'm not one of these small town. Uh, go out in the hinterlands. Uh, in the village type type guys. That's not me. Stay in the city. You go to Mexico City. To I like to I like big city life. I yes. like international cities. What do you know about Mexico City? All right, you're gonna stay in a place that's called Roma Norte, North Rome. It's the best area. It's basically all Japanese and French gringos that live there and run everything. Um, lots of Americans. What you'll find in La Condesa, La Condesa is the, it's like two neighborhoods right next to each other. That's basically where you'll go. You don't need to go to the pyramids if you don't want to. It's an hour and a half ride on the bus, you, but you can't climb up the damn things anymore. So what's the point? I've gone up those pyramids up and down, up and down, up and down, training, running up and down. Now you're not even allowed to get on the damn things. So Mexico City is one of the beautiful, most beautiful places in Latin America comparatively, because every Latin American city, like it's basically like the LA of Latin America, big money there. Most of the people who were my neighbors made more money than I do. So they're getting paid American, North American standard wages there. Step over two, um, two neighborhoods, those people make $3 a day. So you follow me, stay in these two areas in Mexico City, and you don't have to go anywhere. You could 
rent a, a electric bike if you want to and just speed all over. Um, the Ritz Carlton is right there. So if you don't know, you can use Ritz Carlton as a reference of where I'm talking. Well, look, about. I, I want to go somewhere where there's bars, nightlife, yeah, that kind of thing. It. That's you all I want to send people to. On the North Bay. That's where I sent them. I sent them to the bar places. That's it's all bars. It's as far as you can see. Okay, here's here's Roma Norte. Here's the whole Roma section, North. like one road, and it's all bars and restaurants. There's like coffee shops made for Instagram selfies and shit. And I mean, it's 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 like you know, it's like L.A. People are walking around with their little fuzzy fucking dogs and shit. Not me. I have a Doberman. I'm out here in a hood. <laughs> It's nice though you don't nothing happens there's no crime in that particular area um you could drive if you want to but dude ubers are teslas there okay you can order a tesla uber there it's not really it's not uber it's a tesla service you can get a suburban from the fucking airport it'll drive you straight to your airbnb and it'll cost you 35 bucks yeah there's a lot of good stuff in mexico city the food's amazing of course um, get a game plan and ahead of time and make some contacts in Facebook groups of people, the gringos in, in Mexico or, you know what I mean, um, if, if that's what you want. Um, I'm only connected with the fire service, so all my friends are firefighters. So anywhere I go in any of these countries are other gringo firefighters that are living in these countries. So anytime I need intel, I talk to them in advance and say, I'm going to El Salvador next week. Where do I stay? Well, you're staying in Surf City next to me. That's where you're staying at. First of all, jackass. I go, yeah, but I, I need to get around. I need to be by the transport. Oh, man. Everything's within walking distance. Like, you can go anywhere here and you go surfing. I'm like, all right, I'm game. So we're planning that trip. Men's trip is canceled because of the fucking cartel. And I have a baby face. How do you guys like the baby face? Should I go back to the beard? Or just do this little five o'clock shadow horse shit. I don't know, man. It's up to you. It depends on what you're trying to do. You out there scouting for new? You out there scouting for young chicas or or no? No, man. I got this wife here. She, you know, I don't do that. I did that. Okay. Well, well, well. Then get your beard back, brother. After you uh, finish your training, let me go to hot sauce. Hot sauce. What you got? Hey, how's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, hey, hey, Carlos, how are you? Pablo, thanks for letting me up. No, um, I, um, this is a good stream that you did because we definitely got to change the narrative in the face of, you know, what, what passport bros are, uh, what, what it's all about, you know, because we don't, we, we need to get more attention and, you know, get away from the nonsense from the pookies and peanuts. Well, I oh. think, well, hot sauce, check this out. We got enough attention. The Passport Bros is one of the most viral online social movement. This is true. This damn is damn near in the in the world. This is true. So we got enough attention. Mm -hmm. What what we need is a better image. Well, that's what I mean. That's right. what I mean. Yeah, a better, a better image, right? Because, like you know, like I'm, I'm the Asian expert, right? You guys are the, the Latin experts. So I just came up just to say hi, talk a little bit, but also kind of learn a little bit because actually, I want to, I want to move my business from Kenya over to Mexico, actually over to Latin America. So you know what I mean. I'm just, just trying to get information from you guys because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to shift over to, to that side of the world now. Well, Professor Mex is the Mexico expert. If if that's what you yeah, so I just, I just and and yeah. he has a YouTube channel. So go go to his YouTube channel, Professor Mex. Drop your link to your channel in the chat when yeah. you can, of and uh, help this brother out. Yeah, because I because I just want to know like the safety issues and things like that. Because you know I'm coming from you know I've been 20, 20 years in 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 Asia, so you know where it's extremely safe. So I just want to know about like the safety risk and things like that, uh, as far as like open doing like agricultural business and things like that. But from what I'm hearing, Mexico is pretty safe, right? If you're not involved in uh, <laughs> narco trafficking, yeah, I think you should be okay in most places in Mexico. Yeah, but go ahead. Uh, I'll let Professor Max answer that. 
No, it's not safe and you should go somewhere else. Absolutely. <laughs> right now is not the time to come to Mexico. I'll tell you when it's time to come. You can go to Mexico City. Nothing happens in Mexico City. You can mm -hmm. come here to Querétaro, which is two and a half hours away. It's the third biggest city in Mexico. If you mm -hmm. want to go to the country, to the mountains where it's freezing as cold all year, I'll be there next week. It's called Puebla. Okay? Not a very safe place. But if you go to Puebla, the other parts of Puebla is like Sacatlan. That's the mountainous areas. There's no city whatsoever. That's waterfalls and repelling. No, no. I'm thinking. I'm thinking like Mexico City, uh, Tulum, or, or 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 what is that? Cabo, like those areas. There's three big places. that are the three different areas. So I would suggest, unless you got a lot of time in your hands, to to investigate. If you'll be here for a month, you could do all three places. If you're only gonna be here for a week, just go to Mexico City because there's really Mexico City is like a concentrated version of everything in Mexico, and it's okay. also the richest. It's also more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just tell you guys, uh, my Airbnb that's in Mexico City costs $160 a night, and it's booked 365 days a year. So there's no way. And I'm now to build this fucking castle. I'm going to have all you guys come stay for free, so you never have an excuse, never come down. I don't have money. I'm going to fucking stay with a professor for like a month. I'm gonna put you all to work, fucking paint the walls or whatever, fucking clean the grass. But we're gonna have so much fun. But wait until it's safe because it goes through phases like this. Colombia's the same way. I was in Colombia for eight years. I was the first YouTuber in Colombia before I got canceled by feminists. They shut my shit down, they closed my, everything, my Gmail, even my bank account. I even had people calling the fucking military I be just just fucking with me because I said you can come down here and be a man. You can be a man down here, and boy, did they lose their fucking minds. What is that supposed mm -hmm. to mean? Oh, you know what I mean? That whole rhetoric. But if you want to go somewhere like just to practice in Latin America, and you don't know, I want to, I want to, I want to open. I want to. I have a, I have a, a chicken farm business in Kenya. And I want to move from Africa over to, to Latin America. So Mexico, no from my research, Mexico is okay. like the spot. So I'm looking to it open is a business. spot. And guys, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, you could do all the research online first on the government website. Mm -hmm. On the Mexico.gov website, MXGov, whatever. You, mm -hmm. There's a button to translate the whole website into English. Then you're going to go on to what's called CONO4. C-O-N-O-F-O-R. Just so you break it, just so you know, okay. I have an apple farm, I have a peach farm, and I have a plum farm and a yeah. pear farm. Okay, nice. And all of it is enormous. It's fifty-five acres, so you know. Okay. And what I do in cases like this, like you're a farmer, you want to do chickens. What I'll do is I'll sublease a portion of my land. I'll give you like five acres. You give me a thousand bucks a month. With that, I set you up with the distributors for egg and chicken production. Because where I am just happens to be like the perfect environment for chickens. Like yeah, well, well I want to open up. I'm, I'm doing a processing plant. So but I just want to make sure that it's it's okay uh, to do business there. Plant. I'm not going to get City, I'm sorry? Mexico City is better for that because your distribution okay. hub is right there. Now, like if you want yeah. to lay back a little bit, just be a farmer like me that doesn't do no, shit. No, 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 no. I want to. <laughs> yeah, I want to import export. I want to well, I want to export chicken. So buy chickens there, uh, you know, process it and then ship it to like China, US, Europe, and shit like that. So or yeah. or or to other parts of Latin America that just happen to have uh free countries now, like um El Salvador and Argentina. Yeah, they're yeah, gonna yeah, start yeah, have yeah. a lot more spending money now. Listen, if your economy goes to shit. And the dollar, for for example, here, mm -hmm. go. It went from twenty something to sixteen. It's at the lowest it's ever been in history today. Yeah. Or on Friday, it was the lowest it's ever been in history. Once it gets to that point, you need to go to a better country. Yeah. Seriously, like Colombia has the best exchange rate right now. Mexico is dropping like a fucking like a rock. Mm -hmm. um, Argentina, because it's it, it, they've gotten rid of all their government trash. Now all the people have triple the money to spend on themselves. And mm. the same thing is with El Salvador. Now that all the gangs are gone, people are actually out spending money and stuff and improving their lives. And 
the kids are actually grow up normal. So if you decide to do, like I said, one thing, for example, the chicken plants that are in the U.S. are all controlled by certain families. They're all in Arkansas. Right. Here in Mexico, nothing is controlled by anybody except for avocados. The distribution okay. of avocados is owned by the cartel. And mm -hmm. if you don't work for the cartel, you die. So you become a subcontractor as a farmer for the cartel. See, what people don't understand about the cartel in most countries, that means Colombia, that means here, mm -hmm. that means like back in, in Eastern Europe with the mafia. When you want to have a business, you need to have permission, right? Any business. Any business needs permission. But in this case, because the permission givers are your competition, you have to actually get permission from the fucking cartel. Well, <laughs> that's, that's, what that's, that's what I'm here. like. So that's yeah, what I'm asking. You know what? Like, I'm not going to go and fight fires right now in that town because I don't have permission. You follow me? I don't have permission to go do that. But in a well, month see, that's, now, what I'm, that's what I'm asking. Like, so if yeah. I open up a business and I do all the government registration, am I yeah. going to get shaken down by the cartel in Mexico yes. City? Yes, that's why you don't go and you register with the government, but you go to the towns that are chicken towns. And what the mm -hmm. farmers do is they're what's called a um, cooperativo. Okay, cooperativo, like yeah. I have a coffee farm in, in Colombia. I was forced to sell to the colectivo. I was not allowed to bag my own shit sent to the States. The rules were at the time that you must sell all of your coffee cherries through the, the distributor through the colectivo. The colectivo is owned by the cartel. The colectivo mm. is the distributing center for everything in Colombia. Mexico is different. When you go to a chicken town like this one. Well, that's what I'm asking for Mexico. For Mexico. You get permission from the other farmers. And then they give you the green light and they're good. And they're actually pretty open about it because they want more chicken farmers. They don't look at it like you and I would say, well, I don't want, I want to knock down all the buildings so I can be the tallest. What mm. they do is they put all the same businesses on the same streets. So when mm -hmm. it comes to farms, they keep all of the apple tree farms together, all the pear tree farms together. Oh, that's all how it is in China. Farms. Yeah, that's how it's in China. That's exactly. China. It's the same way. It's very organized. But like I yeah. said, if you want to be a farmer like that, me, I'm a farmer. I'm a lazy ass. I have 400 trees, and then I got 55 acres, and I let other people farm it for me, but they pay me for renting, like, one section of, of whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they all have permission from the apple mafia, the mm -hmm. apple mafia and the pear mafia and the fruit mafia and all those motherfuckers gave me permission like three years ago just to do what I do. You see what I'm saying? I had to actually become friends with them so they didn't go and, you know, maybe extort me or burn my fucking house down because they will do that. So I just want you guys to know, I'm being honest, with you, Mexico can be completely fine and safe. I've been here seven years without issue. I mean, some girl did steal my Mercedes, right? So, but all the fuckery, all the things that you and I would say that like some criminal mastermind does, these motherfuckers here, the bad ones, do all that to everybody. So there's no love for any gringos down here, okay? It's not, you got to earn fucking respect from people. You got to be bigger than everybody else. You need to be stronger than everybody else. You need to learn Spanish. Um, you need not to put your wallet on top of your head. You know, leave with your wallet like a lot of us dummies do. We learn, though, and uh, we learn the hard mistakes when you move down here because it's a transition from transition, transition. And I know you being having been in China and saw that you were there for over a decade, right? I've been, I'm, I'm still in China. I've been here 20 years. Okay. So I don't need to tell you anything. But to our listeners... You and I both know China is safe. Extremely. You and I both, yeah, extremely safe. You and I both know that that it's a different world than what we're used to over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you take it, then you go downstairs, you go down to the dirty south down here where I am. Then you get a picture of a whole different world because in Mexico we have about nine different regions. Cold, hot, very hot, um, rains all the time. Freezing ass cold, mountainous, wooded city, desert, lots of forest, 
jungle. We have jungle down in Cancun and, and down in that area. So we have all these different environments that you can choose from. And you need to do an advanced study on the areas. And the way that I recommend guys do that is you pick the city and then you start looking at all the gyms. Because the gyms are like a mini cosm, chasm of everything around it. So if you go to a poor town and you see the gym, it looks like shit. You know that that is what the town is like. Then if you go to a nicer area that has nicer things and nicer restaurants and nicer clothes or whatever, it's very, very different. It's a great disparity between the two. But it'll give you an eye on the entire market of the area. So that's how you would basic. That's how I've been able to do that. You can look from a distance and kind of gauge the market. Like if I want to buy oil, I'm going to look on a satellite and I'm going to see what company has the lowest oil in their tank outside. So I know. Hey guys, I got a shout out. Uh, I got a shout out my cash apps here. Um, real quick, Scott, thank you for the uh, ten dollar cash app. Appreciate you. Shout out to Scott for his $10 cash app. Let me put that in the chat there. Appreciate you. Uh, and I have another cash app here. Lackenzie. Ah, Lackenzie. Thank you for the $2 cash app. Hit the cash app if you have not already. If you enjoyed the stream tonight, Columbia's for grown men. Please help your brother out. Give me a cash app or uh, or some likes or something. I mean, really, don't steal cable, brother. Help me out. We're here to get to bring a service uh, so that you'll know you don't have to run around with your ass hanging out, uh, embarrassing yourself uh, on a live stream. You can do it grown man style, like my man Jay, like Passport Heavy like Jay Clyde, and like myself. You don't have to be out here booty bucket naked looking a fool. That's what I'm here to... That was my uh, message for the evening. Um, any thoughts, final thoughts on uh, tonight's content? Did you? Wh what did you learn? Oh, anybody uh, yeah man what i learned uh well i'm gonna just say man i really appreciate you putting up my content again um yeah i, I want more mature brothers to start coming to columbia uh to be honest with you i think a lot of the uh a lot of stuff's getting shut down so i think it's actually yeah. on a good path that's at the moment to uh start kind of getting rid of the riffraff that come. So, I mean, I think, I, yeah, I, I honestly, I to be honest with you, I actually love what Columbia is doing in both Cartagena and Medi. So, yeah, you know, they apparently they were, they, they had some type of crackdown in, in, uh, Parque Yeras as well, but yeah. Um, <laughs> apparently this stuff has been done before they chase them away. They come back and they let it yeah, go. Yeah. I just, I yeah. think it's a cycle. Um, it is cycle upon cycle, guys. This is the same conversation we had 10 years ago. We're going to have it 10 years. Right. <laughs> it's the oldest profession in the world. It's not yeah. going anywhere. Oh, um, yeah. It's not going nowhere. But, yeah, man, I just, you know, um, like I said, man, I, I love the title for tonight. And it's, I think you're, I think you hit the nail on the head. Right. I, and I think, um, like I said, there's a way to do this um, and, and, and make yourself the country that you're visiting um, and the people you are with look amazing. You um, can't break that. If you look like an ass and you make us look like, we're permanent residents, guys. And if you come down here and, and act stupid, that just makes us, because when they refer to us, they refer to us as the passport bros. The gringo. Bros. Yeah. The gringo. <laughs> you're always going to be that guy. You all, yeah. No matter what, so you and I, we're all buddies here, right? We can all hang out. We don't judge each other. We go down there, they judge us. You wear shorts and flip flops and fucking man jeans, they're gonna fucking judge you. If oh you man, jeans, they're not gonna judge you. So you need to know these things. 
Exactly. I I've seen my share of flip flop wearing short wearing gringos in the middle <laughs> of Medellin, and I'm like, oh man. Um, you military guys. Yeah. You yeah. military guys. Sure. Are you might as well put a big target right here on your chest that says, "I'm the gringo. Come get me." But anyway, um, I understand. You're on vacation. Yeah. You're on vacation. You're you're feeling relaxed. I get it. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I want to say this. We did a we did a live stream on um, how you should dress uh, in South America and places in Africa. That I go and people need to look at that video because there was a lot of good information in there. Uh, th yeah, that's on my uh, channel. Yeah, we both did that together as a team. Um, for what I see, guys who are responsible, mature, go to the correct areas, are not having any problems at all. Period. If you know where to go and you're mature and you're responsible, you're not reckless, you know, you're not going to have any problems. You know, it's, it's strictly the people who are reckless that are having problems. Simple as that. And people trying to sensationalize things and scare people away. Yes, there's certain areas you need to stay away from, but the people who are mature know what areas to go to and they know not to act a certain way. Just like uh, the guy was saying, um, you, you uh, conduct yourself in a way where you're a good representation of Americans and as a whole. You know, don't go over there being an a-hole or anything like that. Simple as that. My other concern is when a local asks you not to do something, you might want to take heed and not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. These for, a, lot, a lot of times it's for your protection. I know Americans have this, this uh, bravado that we don't want to be punked by anybody. We just want... We feel like we have the freedom to do what we want. Yeah. That come that has its limitations. I know what let, me, let me let me let me add to that also. Uh, not just when they ask you not to do something, notice the tone whenever they're telling you something. Because sometimes they won't say it directly. Right. And that, that happens in Brazil. And okay, that happens in Brazil. Yeah, so it, it, understand like under, understand the tone also. Don't just you know sometimes they they might not say it directly, but you can tell that they're right. They don't like something. They're so. apprehensive about the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Colombians are very doing that. <laughs> Colombians are so like Colombians don't want to hurt your feelings. Colombians, the last thing a Colombian wants to do is have conflict with you. They don't want to tell you no, but if they, they do, do tell you no, you know no. that's a that's a yeah. a real no. Yeah. Right. So that means that when you meet a girl or meet a few girls and you live on the fucking top floor and they're walking up and down the stairs with their high heels, tell them to take that shit off when they're walking upstairs. Because the neighbors, that's like their number one complaint about us guys is that every fucking weekend we got three or four fucking girls going up and down the fucking stairs click clack click clack and it bothers the shit out of the locals and they've told me your airbnb people your airbnb people are four five six women at night with their you know dancing music and all this shit so uh, tell them to take their shoes off if you got a whole stream of girls coming up to visit you idiots yeah, just simple things Don't like that. Just listen to people what you're saying. Yeah, they, they're giving you advice for a reason. They're not just saying it just for the hell of it. In Columbia, um, yeah. five is more than more than one girl is a risky proposition at any time. That's my decision. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, that is my decision. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I wanted to Pablo, yeah, I just wanted to say, Pablo, uh, you're making me a believer, man, of Latin America. You're making me a believer, <laughs> right? All right. So, yeah, I can see, as long as you're not reckless, you're fine. As long yeah. as you're not reckless, you're fine. Period. Yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna yeah, I'm I'm gonna head out. But thank you for letting me up. Uh you definitely making me a believer. So hopefully I'll be over there somewhere over there sometime soon. All right. Look, yeah. look for me on YouTube. You. Look for me on YouTube also. It's just my name is Professor Max. I'm there on YouTube. And okay. I got all the videos we'll all these countries with tips and stuff if you want them. But most of it's okay. stuff here in Mexico, so. All right, okay. guys, I got 
got to wrap it up. This is going to be the end. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming up. Um, I think we've said that all that needs to be said. Uh, thank you, Jay, for coming through. And so please subscribe to Jay. His channel was in the chat. Uh, if you'd like to go back. Oh, give him, give him your, give him your, your, the name of your channel again. Okay. So I was going as Jay Fleming. That's my real name, but, um, I actually changed my name to the J curve and there's actually a reason behind it. And I'll go ahead and explain it on my channel next time I get a chance, but yeah, man, uh, just go ahead subscribe to the J curve. I appreciate all you brothers. Um, I'm here for you guys. You guys have any questions, how to move things of that nature. Um, yeah, man, just hit me up whenever. Appreciate you, Jay. And Jay, I, like I said, I will be in Medellin uh, May the 24th until June the 5th. So I don't know yeah, where you'll be, but I, I will be, be in Colombia then. Yeah, All right? Yeah. I should be here, man. I'll see you then. All right, brother. All right. Okay, I, I just want to say thanks for having me on. And um, um, I, my, I, I restarted my channel seven months ago and it's finally getting some subs recently. And I've been um, promoting my channel. So, you know. but I don't plan on being a big time YouTube content creator. I just want to get the word out. And well, just, I just want to say out. thank you. Right. I just, thanks for having me. And um, yeah. And I didn't have any problems at all in Colombia. I just listened to what the um, expats who had to say. And I took it all in. All, all advice I've been given from other content creators about what to do and what not to do in Colombia. Listen to locals. You got to listen to people. And that's the problem with these uh, certain individuals. There was this one clown that was in here in, in the Philippines. The guy was trying to tell him not to do something. He said, well, this is my constitutional right. I'm like, clown, you're not in the, in the United States. These guys, it's just some people are just have no business traveling. And that's what the problem is. You got these clowns who have no business traveling traveling so and that's basically the bottom line yeah so just All like right. you said Columbia's for grown folks <laughs> Columbia's, for grown, Columbia's for grown ass men grown yes. man's men yeah grown ass men exactly okay all right man all right, all right. thank Great. you and uh yeah and my YouTube channel is Carlos red 2.0 red with two D's R E D D and just let people all know right. all right Carlos Take red. Care, people. okay all right Thank you, everybody, for coming through. It's been your boy, Pablo Frescobar, another wonderful show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope we learned something. Like I said, Columbia's for grown-ass men. It ain't for the, you know, we ain't running the daycare. <laughs> we ain't running that. You got to be grown, baby. You got to be mature. You got to have some 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 maturity about yourself in this game. All right. It, it pays great rewards. Columbia pays great rewards to those who heed the warning. To those who don't. Whatever happens, happens, brother. Love, peace and hair grease, everybody. It's Pablo Frescobar. I'm gone.